In this video, I'm going to demonstrate some new features that I've added to the configurable version of GraphPad. But first, I'm going to start by um, demonstrating how users can um, add and modify forms. So in this case, this first example, I'm going to simply modify this form to have a um, company logo in the upper right-hand corner and move everything down a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into text mode and go to settings and change the form so I can edit all the objects in it. I'll then go into points and create a selection area that grabs the top part of the form. And I'm going to translate this down. And I'm going to translate it just by uh, one half of a square. And I'll hit the down arrow. And now I've created the space for my logo. And now I'll go into my photo library and I'll search for my company logo. I'll place it on the drawing. I'll resize it. Turn the uh, snap off so I can put it exactly where I want it. Place it in the upper right hand corner. And now this looks like the form that I want. And so I will then save this and we'll just call it as a new form template. And we'll just save this as T2. To use it, I would just go into um, my file folder, hit new, select T2. And now I have my new form. Now, one of the things that's a bit confusing is, is that when I'm editing these objects, bring it over here, um, all these text values, um, what actually each one of these text values means. So if we go in, we change this to an editable form, and now I go to properties, and first I'm going to turn my settings, turn my um, file names on, and then also my sequence IDs. And you'll see that um, if we look on these fields over here, it's set up so that I can actually tab through each one of these fields and I have the um, field names. So if I go to text mode and turn my properties on and I select one of these fields, I'll see the field name and we see it um, here as well. But we also see this type two. If for example, I select this field, we see that that's a type four. Um, but what are type two, type four? And then if we look at this last one, we'll see it's a type five. What are these different field types? And to demonstrate that, what I've done is I've actually created another form type so we can go through each one of these. So here again, we have each one of the form types. And we'll see that we have a um, form field, scooch this down, um, type two. Okay, and if we go into our, if we type into that field, what it is, it's just a text field. And we can type our value in and hit return and we'll move on to the next field. If we look at this type three, it's a checkbox. And to use a checkbox, all we do is we touch the field, it'll turn on, touch it again, it turns off. The third, or the fourth um, type four is a numeric field. If we touch in this field, we simply get a numeric keypad. Nothing particularly fancy there. The type five is going to be a list box field, and we'll actually see type inside this field, and we see it has our different um, list objects. And what are those list objects? Hang on one second. So if we go into this list field here, and what we'll do is we'll change this so we can edit it. And now we'll be able to see these actual values. So it's list ID 102. If we go into lists, we see 102s, inspections and permits, and that's how that's set up. The last field is a signature field. If we press inside that field, we can actually just sign. And those are the different field types. Now, looking at the list fields, we now have the ability within GraphPad to actually add our own lists and edit them. So to add a new list, we just hit the plus sign. It's going to default to an ID um, starting with 2000. You can change that and then put in uh, the name of our list once we, actually, we'll go ahead and do that, and we'll just say list two, or two, save. If we go to list two, it has no values. We can add our values. It has both a value and a cost. So we can put in um, service two, and we'll put a cost of $400 into it. Oops, sorry, I messed up. Let's 
go back, list 2, service 2, put in 400, return, go back. And now what we'll see is if we actually take this list field um, here, we'll go ahead and change that to an editable form. We'll touch this, go to properties, Let's try that again. So it's list 102, we could actually change that to um, list 2001, our new list field. And one of the things that I forgot to mention is, is that if we look closely, <clears throat> if we have a cost and we have a field name and a field name underscore cost, what will happen is when we select this as the um, list, it will automatically um, populate the cost into the cost field. That sort of makes sense. So let's just go back and what we'll do is we'll save this as a template and we'll call this temp3 and now we'll open that new template and we'll just go to our list field. We now see our service. If we select our service we, it populates the numeric value as well. And lastly, what I'm going to go into is appointments. <clears throat> now have the ability to locally add appointments and so users can go into appointment, they can fill this field out and hit save along with the time. Um, and it's going to show up as an appointment for that day. We can oscillate between today's appointments, tomorrow's appointments, there's none, um, or all appointments if we have multi-day travel. And if we open a form, once we've got an appointment set up, after we bring this, this information up and we open a new form, it will pre-populate it. And so we see here, it's taken the data and actually populated into the field. So that's my presentation for today. Um, that shows some of the new features in the configurable version, um, some bug fixes, and that explains how the form typing works. And that's my presentation. Thanks.